Well, uh, I'm here with Don Jones, and uh, Don, could you could you tell us a little bit about about what you do? Uh, sure. Uh, it, whatever I get paid to do. Uh, okay. <laughs> anything. All right. Um, I work. Uh, uh, I'm a co-founder for a company called Concentrated Technology, uh -huh. and we focus on trying to give IT pros uh, as much knowledge as possible in the smallest amount of space possible because they don't have a lot of time. Yep. So we, uh, uh, we produce uh, white papers for companies. We do a lot of blogging, so people mm -hmm. can just come up and read free stuff. Uh, we speak at conferences, we write for magazines, uh, we occasionally write a book here and there. Uh, it's just really all about education. Quick, dirty, get it done, do the job, move on. Okay, well hey, that's what IT pros need. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Okay, right on. Well, uh, you have a session here at TechEd, and yeah. uh, you know I, I read that and I was like, hey, PowerShell, it's a big topic. And, yes. uh, yeah, and uh, you know, zero to hero. So I yep. saw that, and I was like, "All right." Yep. So you know, got some tips for that. Could you could you tell us a little bit of uh, things that that would help help out the IT pro? Sure. The PowerShell? Well, yeah, it, there's this kind of misconception with PowerShell that it's <laughs> it's VB script all over again. Mm -hmm. That you're gonna have to sit down and, and learn to become a programmer, and it's it's gonna be Visual Studio, and and not that IT pros can't handle that. They don't have time. Mm -hmm. That's why there are developers. Yeah. And PowerShell's not about that at all. You certainly can go really far in PowerShell, and it can be misleading because you see all these early adopters like myself doing this crazy complicated stuff. But you can you can type a command and hit enter, and it's just like using the old command line, only it's uh, it's a lot more consistent. So uh, some of the tips I talk about are discoverability. Uh, PowerShell doesn't want you to go read a manual. There's a help function. Type help star and it'll show you everything it can help you with. Uh, you can run uh, help for a command and get examples and really, really detailed information on how it works. So it, it's, it's designed to try and help you get into it a little bit more easily. And it's very task-based. You know, running a command called new user, not a lot of confusion about what's going to happen there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's really consistent. Mm -hmm. You see a command parameter called uh, dash computer name not a lot of confusion about what you need to put there. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. And, and I think one of the big tips is just to start really using some of those features, asking for the help, mm -hmm. and just start using it. Find something and, and give up the command line shell. And the next time you're doing a task that, that you know you have to do more than once, you know you're going to be doing this over and over and over, and it's really tedious, like making a new Active Directory user, do it in PowerShell. And maybe mm -hmm. it'll take you 10 minutes that first time, but it's only going to take you 10 seconds the next time, and that's where the savings kicks in. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, could you uh, show us maybe uh, a little bit of snippets of uh, some, some tips that you can give us? Yeah, actually, one of the things I, I want to show you, so uh, uh, Windows 7 is going to include PowerShell version 2. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll also be in Server 2008 R2. And then within 120 days, it'll also be available for uh, XP 2003 and Vista. So Windows PowerShell version 2 everywhere. OK. And I firmly believe, with, with all apologies to the Windows 7 team members, that uh, PowerShell version 2 is the reason to buy Windows 7. It's a default wow. installation option, so it's mm -hmm. in the OS by default. And there's this feature called remoting that lets you run a command on your box, push it out to as many machines as you need to, have the command actually run on those boxes and bring the results back. Mm -hmm. So no more schlepping around to different desktops and doing things manually. So it's really cool. So I can do a quick little demo of what that, uh, some of that remoting stuff looks like. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. So the easiest way to start is to just uh, kind of create a variable, dollar sign $s, someplace to keep this remote session and then run a command called new ps session. Uh, give it the computer name you're after. Uh, I'll just do this to localhost. Not as impressive, but I don't have a whole server farm here. That creates a new session from this shell to actually a whole service running on another copy of the shell that's, that's now in memory. Could have been a remote computer. Uh, I can enter that session. Enter ps session and give it the session I want to enter, which is in that variable s. And you see the prompt changes. So now I'm, I'm connected to the shell on that remote computer, can run whatever commands I need to run. Uh, and when I'm finished, just uh, exit the session, and I'm back on my shell. So it's a really, really neat way to, to administer tons of different machines that are all over the different environment. Uh, once you've got a bunch of these sessions, so the neat thing with this new ps session variable or commandlet is you can give it a comma delimited list of computer names or even a text file of computer names and let it create a session to multiples and then run a command that goes out to every single one of them simultaneously. Hmm. So really, really effective stuff. Just kind of a neat little feature that's coming along. And uh, again, you know, this is the reason to have version 2 on every machine in the environment. And Windows 7 is an easy deployment mechanism for PowerShell version 2. Yeah, OK. And so when, when they go and deploy those out, uh, how does that all come back? Does it come back in a file? How does that? Uh, so when you get the, the results back, everything in PowerShell is an object. 
So just if I were to run a, a command like get process and I get all these process objects, if I were to push that command out to 10 machines, I'd get 10 sets of those. Okay. So it's exactly the same. And then you can say, uh, well, okay, I want to get all those processes, but I want to sort them in order of virtual memory utilization in descending order. And, uh, oops. and after I do that, I only want to keep, let's say, the, uh, the first 10. So you can play with those objects and manipulate them based on properties and things like that. So this is the top 10 virtual memory consuming processes uh, that would have come back from those machines. So it's, it's kind of a really easy, flexible way. And it's not scripting. It's just a few commands strung together. Right. And, and how, how do you often see people uh, or, or recommend people to automate this? So, you know, if you want a regular port of X machines 